Welcome to Module 6, Schematic Navigation, where we learn how to find our way around the schematics in the Design in Altium Designer. After exploring navigation features, we will focus more on moving around within the schematic window, as well as the sheet settings. Looking at our old familiar SL1 project, we can see the various schematics nested under the top-level schematic. As mentioned earlier, this project is a hierarchical one with sub-schematics. They are all wired together at the top level. The nesting of the schematic shown in the project panel is another visual clue to the design structure. Another useful tool for getting quick peeks at schematics is to hover over their icons in the project panel. Doing so enables you to see thumbnail views of the corresponding schematics. This was enabled in the Design Insight settings under Preferences, as shown here. Each of these preference settings provides additional insight into the design or its components. In an earlier module, I showed how to jump down into a subsheet by holding the control key and double-clicking on the schematic sheet symbol. This simplifies following design data or control flow in the schematic. We will illustrate both the project insight and the enable connectivity insight using the SL1 project. Starting with project insight, hover over the icon for the project file in the project panel. This generates a set of thumbnails that represent all the files in this project. If, while the set of thumbnails is still displayed, you click on one of them, it will open up that particular file. Just one more way to get around the design project files. The Enable Connectivity Insight is also very handy for following a net in the design that you are not familiar with. First, the project must be compiled. But once it's compiled, selecting a wire or a bus and hovering over it will generate a pop-up window. This pop-up window shows which schematics the wire or bus is connected to, and if you hover over one of the schematics listed, a thumbnail view is generated with that net highlighted. Now if you click on that schematic listed, it will open up the schematic with the net highlighted as well. This can be a great way for reviewing a design or following the data or control flow in a design, especially if you're not familiar with the particular design. To clear the highlighting, just click on the schematic sheet or hit the clear button on the bottom right side of the schematic window. One more tool that provides project design structure as well as giving component and net information is the Navigator panel. To open the Navigator panel, click on Design Compiler tab to pull up its menu. Now we would select Navigator option. Here we're looking at the Navigator panel, and there's a lot of information here. The top pane shows the schematics in the project, nested if needed. The second pane shows the components, and the third pane lists the nets and buses. The bottom pane lists further details of selected elements from the upper panes. We will briefly examine some of these panes and leave the rest of you to explore on your own. Clicking on a lower level schematic, we see the listings in the lower panels update. We see the component list, the net bus list, and the port list showing the selected schematics information. If you click on a component, the schematic will be opened if needed, and the selected component highlighted. This is a great way to find a particular instance in a large design. Likewise, clicking on the net listed highlights the net and its component. Showing the connections and location within design for nets is one of the more useful functions when looking for a particular design element or its connectivity. Now that we can get around the project schematics, both to trace a net and find components, the next handy operation is changing the schematic view. We can zoom in and out using the mouse. To zoom in, place the mouse on the schematic, clicking it to make sure that the schematic window is acted if needed, and hold the control key down, then scroll with the mouse button. The location of the mouse pointer in the schematic window is the centroid of the zooming action. To pan in the window, hold the right mouse button down and drag the mouse. Likewise, to scroll left or right, hold the Shift key down and scroll the mouse wheel. Using the View pull-down menu is another obvious method for changing our view. This will give you access to a number of view-changing features. Please consider trying some of these now. While the pull-down menu is visible, you may have noticed that there were some letters underlined in the listing. These are reminder hints, or what I would call breadcrumbs, for the shortcuts that Altium supports. 
I can't say enough about these shortcuts. The shortcuts that you use all the time you will remember. A few of my favorites are VF and VD. Simply hitting these key sequences will drive the view directly and can save a lot of time. Looking at this schematic, let's try a few of these shortcuts. VA, for example. Typing V, then A, we can now draw a rectangle to zoom into. As mentioned before, VF. Typing V and then F, we zoom out to include all of the components in this particular sheet. Typing V and then D, we can zoom out to see the full document. Please feel free to try these as well as others. J and C, or Jump to Component, opens up a window for entering the instance name of the component that you are looking for. Let's try finding LED0 in this design. We jump to LED0. If LED0 was not on this particular schematic page, the proper schematic would be opened up. By the way, this works both in the schematic as well as in the PCB. It's probably obvious by now that there are many shortcut keystrokes possible. To get a full listing of the currently active shortcuts, click on the Shortcuts pop-up menu on the bottom right side of the window. This opens up a window that you can scroll down and see what shortcuts are available in your current active document. Within the schematic window, if you click and hold down the right mouse button, a menu will open. This is a quick way to access a number of the more common operations. Right-clicking in the window, we can see a number of options including Find Similar Objects, Place, Grids, View, and Options. For now, we will look at Grids and Options. Grids allow the user to set the placement grid for components and wires. Selecting Grids, the Sum menu opens and we have a few choices. Picking Set Snap Grid, we are presented with the Grid Setting window. Having a reasonable, even-numbered grid makes placement and wiring a lot cleaner. I generally use 100 mil as a starting point for placing components, but I will definitely reduce it at some point when I'm placing wires or when I want to place things like graphics on the sheet. Now let's look at the Options submenu. Again, right-click in the window, scroll down and select Options. Now in the pop-up window menu we see Select Document Options. Let's select that. The Document Options window opens up and there are four tabs on this window. Sheet Options, Parameters, Units, and Template. One important thing to note, that this is for the currently open schematic only and is not the default settings that we were looking at originally in the Preferences. The Sheet Options show basic properties of the schematic, orientation, grids, style, and sizes, as well as other options. Please feel free to try them and explore the various results. One important setting is the electrical grid. This allows the wire to be able to jump to make a connection if the pin is off grid. Normally this shouldn't be an issue if your symbols are drawn with reasonable pin spacing, something nice and even like 50 or 20. The Parameters tab shows all the sheet level parameters. This can be used in the texturings as we discussed earlier. You can also modify this list by using the button shown. Adding a parameter is done by clicking the Add button and entering the needed information such as name and value. A default value of asterisk is listed and can be left for now and filled in later. Edits to this table are as easy as clicking on the field and entering the new text. Note, the standard predefined parameter names are locked and only their value can be modified. The Units tab is for setting local units if needed. The Template tab is for selecting or changing the template used on the schematic. To select one, click on the entry and a pull-down menu with all the currently installed templates opens. Pick the desired template and the schematics are updated. In this module, we have looked at navigating the project design, shortcut keys, and using the mouse to move around, zoom, and pan, as well as some of the schematic document option settings.